Holy Spirit, help us to pray for your people. drinking your water. Purify every heart. I thank you that it is done. You have done it. Thank you, Lord. You are amazing. You are all powerful. In Jesus' name, amen. God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is so good. Amen. All the time. So today, we're going to be talking about uh, seeking God. I mean, you seek God to find God. So really, finding God. Amen. Uh, you, know how to, you, you got the, uh, you want to open up the scripture? What scripture you want? So the first scripture we're going to bring out, we're going to switch it up. It's going to be Genesis 1-1. And I want to start with this scripture because not only is it the first scripture in the Bible, mm. so it's easy to remember. You know what I mean? So we're going to start with that one. And it says, in the beginning, God. Yes, sir. Now that is so deep right there. That, that scripture, so I didn't even finish reading the whole thing. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But it says, in the beginning, God. And since we're going to be talking about seeking God, we're going to talk about in the beginning, God. Notice how it says in the beginning, God, not in the beginning, the things God gives us, not in the beginning, uh, money, not in the beginning, anything else. This is in the beginning, God. And we're going to talk about why it's so important to seek God first above all things and first. You understand what I'm saying? So, so before the heavens and the earth came, God. in the beginning, God. God, amen. Before there was anything, God. So some people that want to see certain things that they that they can't see right now in mm -hmm. there because at first before the earth came we couldn't mm -hmm. see the earth. Amen. But God was first. Amen. So really, what's holding them back from seeing what they want to see in their life is that God is not in the beginning. Amen. That's deep. That's, that's good. Right there. <laughs> that's good. That's good. But yeah. When you go to Jesus, is it about what you want or is it about him? When you pray, are you asking for bread or do you come with the understanding that he is your bread? Amen. Matthew 6, 33. It says, but first and most importantly, this is the AMP. Seek, aim at, 
strive after his kingdom and his righteousness or his way of doing and being right the attitude and character of god and all these things will be given to you also and notice how it says all these things and the reason he was telling that was because uh he was telling them not to be uh, anxious about what they're going to eat or what they're going to wear but that's what the gentiles the people of the world that's what they see that's what they see all things will be given unto you but first see god now a scripture i wanted to talk about was uh that stood out to me while i was reading the other day it was mark so you don't have to beg for the things that you want yeah. when you see god when you find god when you receive god mm -hmm. all of those things that come naturally amen so then that helps me understand the scripture that says be anxious for nothing amen but are all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving mm -hmm. so instead of begging mm -hmm. you're telling god thank you mm -hmm. because you found him amen. and he is everything you need amen So I was reading Mark 12, like I told you the other day, and it's Mark 12, 29. And Jesus was uh, he was going back and forth with uh, with the Sadducees. The, hey, can you, uh, he was going back and forth with the Sadducees, which is the religious, uh, some of the religious leaders. There's the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and I don't think the Sadducees really believe as much in the supernatural and uh, the raising of the dead and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And... One of the scribes, one of the, the teachers of the modern law, they he, they overheard him speaking, and he went up to Jesus and he asked him, uh, "What are the two? What are the great? What's the greatest commandment hmm. of them all?" And Jesus he said, "The first and most important one is hear, O Israel: The Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength." And I really like how Jesus, when he said that, he said, all your mind. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the teacher, he answered back to him. He said, you're right. He said, this is true. He said, it's, it is to love God with all your mind. But he didn't just say with your mind. He said, with all your understanding. Mm -hmm. Showing that he did understand what, he, what Jesus was saying. He didn't just copy what he was saying. You know what I mean? And Jesus, after this, what stood out to me the most was that it says, Jesus answered and said, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Now, the Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And it says, the first and most important commandment is to love our God, is to love your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, right? Mm -hmm. And it has to be all your mind, meaning completely thinking about him. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. What was missing for him to get to the kingdom of God? Because he says you are not far from the kingdom of God. But what was that empty space in between to get to the kingdom of God? So first, we talk about all our mind so now we can put some scriptures together god said love the lord your god with all your what heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your mind. mind you gotta understand that these three, these three things are connected your mind affects your heart and your soul really your soul mm. and your heart is almost like the same thing mm. your mind when they say mind is talking about the conscious mind when they say heart is talk about the subconscious mind. So now we understand that why the scripture says, set your mind and keep focus on things above or heavenly realities. The word of God. Keep focus on heavenly reality. To be set means to not be moved. As you and and the way your conscious and subconscious mind is, as you think about something over and over again, it gets deposited into your heart, your mm -hmm. subconscious mind. So in order to love God with all, just like Max said, now to put it all together, in order to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, 
you have to be constantly thinking about him. Mm-hmm. Because now as you think about his word, think about him, he is in your heart. Amen. So at what what was what question what did you ask? I said so he asked him Jesus replied to him after he answered back to mm-hmm. Jesus. He said, You are not far from the kingdom of God. So what was that what's that space for him to get to the kingdom of God? What is he missing to get there? Because so, he said he was close, but he's not there yet. So the other people around him, he didn't say that to them. Mm-hmm. Because they didn't respond when he when he spoke truth. Yeah. He was the one who received it. He was the one who believed it and he acknowledged that it was true. Mm-hmm. So that brought him one step closer to the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. So when he acknowledged that this was true, now he's close to the kingdom of mm-hmm. God. The distance between the distance between being close and being in the kingdom of God is applying that knowledge. Mm. He was still considered a fool until he applied until he applies the knowledge. <laughs> yeah. um, that, Jesus yeah. said it's, it's, yeah. it's in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> he who hears these words of mine and does not do them is a fool who built his house upon the sand. And when the rains came, the flood the floods came and the winds blew, that house fell. Mm, amen. So the so it was just the fact that as soon as he applied the knowledge, now he's in the kingdom of God. Amen. And once you apply the knowledge of God, the spirit of God comes behind it and amen. gives you power. Amen. So what is the distance between him knowing it? Because see, now he knew it, he believed it. What's the difference between knowing and believing it and then application? What is holding him back? We don't know. The Bible doesn't record whether he applied it or not. But if he didn't apply it, what is holding him back from applying it? It's meditation. Meditation on what Jesus taught him. Because once it's in your heart, you'll just do it naturally. Amen. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. Out of out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if he would have took, if he takes that word that Jesus just taught him and thinks about it, it makes it about him. I will love God with all my mind, all my soul, all my heart. I make the decision within myself. To love God with all my mind, all my soul, all my Holy Spirit, how do I love God with all my mind, all my soul, and all my heart? How do Mm -hmm. I love people the way that I love myself? I know one thing, I'm going to learn. I I, I see myself loving people the way I love myself. I see myself loving myself in the right way because I see myself loving God with all my mind, all my soul, all my heart. Amen. And now he's closing his eyes, going over the words that Jesus taught him. And now he's imagining himself loving God with all his mind, all his soul, all his heart. And then imagining himself loving everybody else mm. that same way that he loves himself. Amen. Now he's meditating on the word. And now once once he's meditating on that word enough to where he just believes it, he won't even have to think about it. He'll just do it. Amen. Because children, we are children of God, right? Amen. If you think about your kids, some of y'all got kids. They are terrible listeners. You tell them something, they don't go do it. They only do what they see. So he has to think about that word long enough until he can see himself doing it. Once he can see himself doing it, he'll imitate what he saw. Amen. When you, before you do something for the first time, you think about it and you see yourself doing it. And then you do what you saw. So that's him, because the words are spirit, getting into the presence of God. And like Pastor Carl say, be what you see. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so you, you mentioned set your mind and keep focused on things of above, right? Mm-hmm. And I started thinking, what's higher than Jesus? Nothing. Nothing. So what's the highest thing you can set your mind on? Jesus. Jesus. So when you are meditating, what should you be setting your mind on? Jesus. Jesus. Because he is the highest thing you can say your mind above. The Bible says that he is that, that he rose and he seated at the right hand of the Father far above principalities. Mm. So when meditating, one thing you want to do, or well, actually what you always want to do is focus on Jesus. Because he is the highest thing you can say your mind on. And think about this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and Amen. the Word was with God. Amen. 
So Jesus is his word. Amen. So when you meditate on his word, mm. you're meditating on him. Mm. His word is with him. Amen. So when you're in deep meditation on his word, you are with Jesus. Amen. You are in the presence of Jesus. Amen. That's good. That's really good. Mm. So many of us pray but we pray outside of the presence of God because the word is not in us. We don't meditate on the word. Amen. So our prayer becomes from the flesh. That's why it has no power. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear your voice and I will listen to you. Then with the deep longing you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity. And you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm. So the key to finding God is searching for him with all your heart. The key to searching for him with all, it, with all your heart is by first he fills your mind. You notice everything, almost everything goes back to the heart. That's why the Bible says, above all, all means everything. Guard the affections of your heart. Mm. What does guarding the affections of your heart look like? You cannot allow a contamination in your heart. Amen. What is contamination? Things that Satan influences. He is the prince of power of the air. He is the ruler of this dark world. He influences the systems of this world. He influences the entertainment business. He influences what you see. That's why we walk by faith and not by what we can see. He influences the music. So guarding your heart is telling yourself, those things do not glorify God. Those things do not increase me in the knowledge of God. Those things do not help me concerning my relationship with God, meaning it does not help me with life. So I will guard myself from those. I will block, I will block that. I will, I will not allow that to come into me. I will not watch that. I will not listen to that. What is it about this heart? Notice Elijah, the uh, James chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. The, uh, the effectual heartfelt prayer of, pull it up, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer hold, holds much power. A heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man is able to accomplish much when put into active, made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man. Hmm. Then it goes on to say that Elijah prayed. So let's talk about heartfelt and then it starts talking about Elijah. Meaning Elijah was praying heartfelt prayers. Because it says, right after I tell you about that, it says Elijah prayed. He prayed for there to be no rain for three years and six months. And, and, and the rain listened to him. The sky listened to him. The clouds listened to him. And then after that, he prayed for the rain to come back and listen to him. Mm. So that means it was something so powerful in Elijah's heart that when he opened his mouth to the rain, that it, would, that it obeyed him. That means the only thing that's that powerful is the word of God. Mm. So the word of God was so deep into his heart, it became a part of him. It penetrated deep into his spirit. So when he opened his mouth, it was as if God was speaking. When you put God's word in your mouth, in, in your heart, and then you open your mouth to speak, declare that word over your situation, it will be as if God is speaking. But the reason why you confess with no power is because no meditation. You don't believe it. You don't fully have, you, you have not been fully convinced because it's not deep into your heart. Because what gets in the way of your power is, yeah, you might confess the word of God. You might speak some good things, but then you speak in garbage as well. So it's too much garbage in your heart. God cannot trust you with that power because then as you speak garbage, garbage will appear. And it actually it does in your life because garbage, garbage consumes your heart. But if the word of God consumes your heart, it will be no room for garbage. 
That's when the power will come. That's good. That is good. That's why people say the eyes are the windows to the soul. So whatever you consume, whether you see or hear, it goes into your heart. That's why the Bible says guard your heart, like what you were saying. And that is so good. Because one thing I like that you said that you told me before was that whatever you say in a casual conversation mm. is what you have in your mm. heart. Yeah. And that stood out to me so much whatever because... Whatever you say on accident. Yeah, exactly. Precisely. Just like without thinking, well, what just flows out of your mouth? So like that stood out to me so much because it is true. Like when you have a casual conversation, sometimes, well, most of the time you don't think you just speak, yeah, you know so. what I mean? Like when you're with your boys and you could tell someone if they're in the spirit. Something that TV Joshua said, you could tell whether someone's in the spirit by the way they act when they're in the flesh. Mm. So that's what it reminded me of. Mm. Whether they're, when they're having that conversation, if they're in the spirit or not, by what they're saying. Mm. And another thing that uh, the Holy Spirit reminded me of was uh, when Jesus was talking to the... So, uh, before you say it, in mm -hmm. other words, you could tell who's in the spirit by the way they act when they leave church. Mm -hmm. Not why they in church. Everybody act good while they in church. <laughs> when you leave church, you could tell who's really been <laughs> meditating on the word. Yeah. Not for real. <laughs> Uh, one thing that the Holy Spirit brought, brought to mind was when Jesus was telling the guy he says you are not far from the, the kingdom of God is the same Jesus that said the kingdom of God is at hand and it's also the same Jesus that said if anyone tells you that the kingdom of God is over there over there they're lying the kingdom of God is within you mm. but he told the man that he's not far from the kingdom of God so how could you be far from something that's already inside of you? You understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Because the word of God is spirit. Mm. The Holy Spirit, when you receive him, he dwells with your spirit. Amen. They are in constant agreement and in constant communication. Amen. It's your flesh, the the carnal nature of your soul, the, the carnality that's in your soul is always arguing with your spirit. That's what Galatians chapter 5 say. They're in constant uh, disagreement. They're constantly fighting mm -hmm. against each other. Yeah. So if you feed on fleshly things, carnal things, all day, then you strengthen that side of you. Amen. You become far away from your spirit. But if you, if you feed on spiritual things, you meditate on your word, not just reading your word, Head knowledge is not going to do nothing for your spirit. It has to get in your heart. You have to know it first. So the knowledge is good. You receive the knowledge. You receive the understanding through intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And then you meditate on that. And, and, and the more you do that, you get closer to your spirit until you become one. So look, I, you watching this, analyze yourself. Do you spend more time entertaining yourself? Do you spend more time talking to other people? Do you spend more time focused about work or your job or your business or worried about this, worried about that, worried about that? Do you do meditating on God's word? Because even when you're at work, you can still be thinking about scripture. You Amen. can still be thinking about God's word. You can still be meditating on it. Amen. But what are you thinking about throughout the day? Whatever you're spending more time doing, that's who's winning. That's who you're moving closer to. It's a constant tug of war. Uh, yeah. And that, that goes to show that having God inside of you, having the Holy Spirit inside of you, you could be so close to the kingdom of God, but so far at the same time. Mm, yeah. You know, us Christians, when we, when we, uh, put our faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit automatically inhabits us. Mm. And most Christians, they have the Holy Spirit inside of them, but have no power, have no wisdom. To be honest, are more cursed than blessed. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. And how could you have the kingdom of God? How could you have the Holy Spirit, God himself, 
inside of you and then laying dormant. You listen to anything? Yeah. Why is that? How can you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and and not producing no power? Yeah. Because his 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 word, his direction, so he inside of you. Mm. He gave you the map to access him mm -hmm. and, and the spirit he gave you spiritual directions you don't understand them because you don't meditate on them Amen. you don't and because you don't meditate on them you don't do them that's good you notice the israelites was on the way to connect he said i've already you are i've already handed you your enemies mm -hmm. you know what i mean Amen. i've already given it to you it's already yours all you gotta do is follow my directions the way i'm telling you to get there you know what i'm saying amen just just do what I'm telling you to do. Take, he told Joshua, meditate on these words day and night. Mm -hmm. And so so that you may observe what to do. Amen. So what you're saying is, so this book of law may not depart from your mouth. Sh shall not depart from you. You shall meditate on day and night. When you speak it over and over again, when you meditate on it, you think about it. How do you observe what to do? You imagine yourself doing what God is saying. The Holy Spirit will give you instructions. But... So lack of meditation, you don't. And so then, since you don't meditate, you don't do what he is telling you to do. And as you do that, the Holy Spirit will do the work. All the the hearts, the hearts that is not hard to him, but the stuff that yeah. we can't do, he'll do that for you. He said, "I already gave the land. Amen. You were just walk in the way that I'm telling you to walk Amen. in. You just walk into a victory. Amen. Because you are with me. But so." The beginning of Jeremiah it talks about praying, right? And then it talks about seeking God and finding God. A lot of us, we pray, but we don't find God in our prayer. We don't receive what we need. We don't receive instructions, direction. So let's look at, go to Matthew chapter 6. Let's look at what God told the disciples when they prayed. What, what, what instructions did they give him? What instructions did he give them? When thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut the door, pray. When thou hast shut the door, pray. So after you have shut the door, then you pray. So think about this. When God opens the door for you, what is it? He's giving you an opportunity. So when he told them to pray then, why did he tell them to shut the door? Because he was telling them to shut the door of opportunity to do anything else. You get the opportunity to do something else when you start thinking about doing something else. So in other words, he was telling them to get fully focused on me. Mm -hmm. Don't start, get, don't let your mind go anywhere except for being on me. Amen. Shut, shut the door. And then once you are fully focused on me, then you can pray. That's good. So a lot of us, we can't pray effectively, but it's because the door is still open. So we start praying and we just start praying and, and we're just thinking about everything. We're praying to Jesus, but we're thinking about what's in the refrigerator or all these other things that our responsibilities or just other things entertainment just we we not we not all the way locked locked in yeah. but this is what i like about shutting the door because it has to do it has more to do with your soul quieting your soul quieting your mind having your mind only focus on god and his word you can be shutting the door all day leading up to prayer as you go about your day you keep your mind that's why the bible says keep your mind set Mm. Well, set, and it says keep focused, because set is to stay. No. You could be all day, even while you're doing other things, having God in your heart, even if it's just simple, thank you, Lord, or help me, Jesus. But you can have a scripture in your head all day. You could be meditating on the reality of heaven all day. Then when it's time for you to shut the door in prayer, it's easier for you to get focused. It is not until you are not thinking about anything else. Then you hit the point of prayer. 
So before you all focus on God, you're not praying. You're just, what, talking, babbling, or whatever. Yeah. Because it says, when thou hast shut the door, then pray. So it's meditation. It leads you to prayer. Jeremiah says, Jeremiah says, when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. We've been praying outside the presence of God because we haven't been seeking him mm. with all our heart. Amen. If there is anything, any lack of peace in your heart, you have a lack of focus on God. Because what does the Bible say about Jesus? He is the Prince of Peace. Amen. When God's presence is in the room, when he sits in the room, what do, what do we all feel all the time? Peace. peace. He say, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So he just told you to keep, this is we just, the key to getting in his presence. Because you find perfect peace when you get in his presence. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So you keep your mind on me. You will receive peace because there's unlimited peace in my presence. I give you peace. You got to be with me to get peace. So meditation on the word of God is the key to God's presence. Once you get in God's presence, then you pray. If you mm -hmm. abide in me as I abide in you, mm -hmm. that's to live in God, mm -hmm. to live in his presence, to stay in his presence. Amen. So that means all day you're thinking about God. Once you get to that point where you're abiding in him, living in him, ask anything and it will be done for you. Amen. So we've been asking and not receiving because we don't meditate on God's word. Just like Jesus said, men are always to pray. There hasn't been one person in history who walked around speaking in tongues 50 years straight, no break. <laughs> I'm talking about what they mouth, you know, the way we do prayer, you know, yeah. which is it's good. It's, it's so good. But Jesus, Jesus had to uh, heal people. Jesus had to, he Speak. ate, he did a yeah. lot of things. But he says men are always to pray. What does he talk about? You think he told us to do something that he wasn't doing? Yes, of absolutely he was always praying. Not the way that we think mm. that the is the only aspect of prayer. It's a great aspect of prayer, mm. but it's not the only aspect of prayer. He was saying, if you go read what Paul says, men are always to be thinking about me. <laughs> Amen. And then when you open your mouth to pray, things will happen. So, also your lifestyle is a prayer. I mean, as you think about God, the actions, the decisions you make will come naturally. Mm -hmm. You do what you think about the most. You are what you think about the most. It's crazy. This is, it's, this is what God has been saying. We, uh, We've been talking about it all week in, in our conversations and our meditations, meditation uh, sessions. Uh, God has been leading us to study this stuff. And then and then they uh, passed the field, preached about it today mm -hmm. at church. So I'm telling you, absolutely. This is what the spirit of God is saying Amen. to you right now. If you take this. And take it personal and apply it to your life. You will see God's power. Amen. As we have been seeing God's power. Amen. But you will see, y'all see soon. Y'all see soon. We we've, we've been seeing God's power. Amen. <laughs> we'll be able to show y'all soon what Thank God Jesus. has been doing for us and doing through us. So if that's it. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. may the love of God, the grace of God, sweet communion with the Holy Spirit Amen. be with all of you, all who receive this, Hallelujah. for all who take this personal. May you receive, may you, may you know God better than you did yesterday. Amen. May you know God, may you receive a new revelation of God every day. A new experience with God every day. May you go to the school of the Holy Spirit. May you know him as teacher. 
may you may God reveal himself to you as everything that you need. May the Holy Spirit break this down to you and you know how to find him. Once you find him, you receive everything you need. Literally, God has a name for everything you need. Literally, God is known for everything that you need. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory. Glory to God. <laughs>